to hold it on the water. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. We got a floater. Cluster. Somebody change the locks and not tell me. Oh, right. I was supposed to tell you. But don't shoot me. I'm only the messenger. You're not supposed to be the messenger. That's the whole point here. This is my own house. Was my house. Why did you go and change the locks for, anyway? Someone broke in last month and stole the stereo. You left your homework. My stereo? Somebody stole my stereo? What? Did they take all my records, too? Nope, only things they thought they could sell for money. <laughs> Very funny. You're extremely amusing, girl. Oh. I'm on call. Bye. Bye. Tell your mother I want to talk to her. By the float dock when we found her, but I think the tide sucked her under the pilings. Jeez, oh, do I hate floaters. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. What? You got All it? All right, there she is. She's right here. Where? She's right here. Okay, here, just take it easy. Don't mess her up. Alrighty, a little to the left. Okay, you got her? Okay, I got her. There you go. Oh. Take her out of the cage now. You all right with that? Yeah. No, we're all right. Where do you think she drifted from? Well, if she's a jumper, my guess would be the second narrows. Yeah. That's getting popular. Here's your pathologist. Hey. What's going on? Where's Patty? We had an infant come in. Oh yeah, that's right. I gotta call him. I'm here now. That okay with you? Yeah, I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled. Are you? This is a breath of fresh air. Well, there's your breath of fresh air. Get to it. She doesn't look like she's been in too long. Good morning, Miss Sun. Good morning, Mr. Winston. Okay, now what are you going to tell this nice lady? What is your story anyway? It takes at least a day for wrinkling to envelop the extremities like that. I'd say she's been in the water between 24 to 48 hours. Can we turn her over? Oh, wait, 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 wait. We might get lucky here. There might be some ID. Just give me a chance. Have you got an evidence bag? Get the party pack of rubbers. There's no ID. Okay, you can do your thing. There's no visible wounds, and if she jumped, I doubt it was from any great height. How many prostitutes we picked up in the past year? Oh, a lot, three or four, anyway. In the last 18 months, there's been six, maybe seven. Odd, so many of them are in the water. And native. Okay, hang on a second, guys. Yeah, what else is there in common? Alcohol overdoses or complications from alcohol. All of them taking a swim. I think I should call homicide. 
Hey, what the hell? I'm gonna call Homicide. Okay, guys. I'm gonna call. Hey, can you believe it? This is where they want to put the casino. This is the site. Good. Save me the plane fare to Vegas. Hey, Vegas is coming to you, baby. Yo, hi, it's Da Vinci here. I'm at the foot of uh, Main Street. I'm gonna need someone down here. Wednesday the 2nd, 10.06 a.m. Deceased known to be Alexander Colville, age nine months. He appears to have been robust, well-fed, clean. Uh, Dr. Da Vinci? Uh-huh. I'm Detective Leary. I got a call from your husband. He thought I should attend this autopsy. <clears throat> You're late. I'd appreciate a call in future. Sorry I was in court. I'll uh, get a note from the judge next time. And Dominic is my ex-husband. Oh. Why would he want you to attend? Got a call from the father. Nanny's disappeared. And he's suspicious. Yeah, he is. What you got? So far, an enigma. Apparently healthy nine-month-old boy found dead in his crib by the nanny. Parents rushed him to emergency. DOA. What'd the father say? He was concerned that the nanny disappeared. She's illegal. Probably scared she'll be blamed. Detective Leary now in attendance. No sign of gastric aspiration. No visible froth in airways. Nine months is low on the high side of the envelope for a crib death, no? It's my preference to delay any speculation until I've excluded all other possibilities. I'll try to keep any ignorant comments to myself, then. No, I'm not asking for a complete bow of silence. And, uh, yeah, if this turns out to be a Sid's death, nine months is probably a little old. We have some nasal abrasion, the result of varied attempts at resuscitation reported by parents and paramedics, continued by staff at hospital. I'm going to open up the body now. Some people find this a difficult moment with infants, I mean. You might want to look away, step outside. No, it's all right, I'll stay. <clears throat> Right here, my desk this morning. I'm holding it as we speak. Fifteen hundred ODs in five years. Good luck. We're uh, we're averaging three hundred overdoses a year per capita. That makes Vancouver number one in North America. You need a whack of all files, okay? Uh, over the last five years on the East Side, I need females who have had prostitution arrests or convictions. I also need all the overdoses, natural, accidental, the whole lot, okay? Sorry, I'll be in pathology. Any requests? No, oh, whatever suits you. Full checkup? Yep. Thorough toxicology. Rotate the tires while you're at it. If she drowned, if she was dead or dying before she hit the water, she's under the influence of whatever. Where are the externals? Wow. No tracks or skin pops. She was using a syringe. She found a place to stick it where none has gone before. I'll check the scalp. Yeah. It's the new guy. Yeah, Dominic Da Vinci. McLeary, pleasure. This is Sonny. Hi. Sonny. You're the one, you're the guy that jumped the queue. Sorry? You jumped past six guys with seniority because you developed a... Uh, a computer program? I'd like to think it was more than just that. Or like maybe they like the way you hand out parking tickets. No, 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 you're perfect. You know, anybody with more than a high school these days, that's very good front for the media. No offense intended. None taken. Really? So, Larry, what's it going to take to really insult you then? You can make me stand in the corner and keep my mouth shut like your ex. <laughs> that's great. Well, you know, she's, uh, she's tight, but she's a really good pathologist. A lot better than Miss Sunny here. Up yours. Of course, not as articulate or charming. I see that. Oh. 
Listen, maybe you could find the time to help me out a little bit here. Could you pull some old files for me? Like this girl, she's a low-rent East End hooker. We're assuming. Sue me if I'm wrong. Could you pull the files and all similars going back, I don't know, five years? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Now, what's the story on the baby? Fluid sample went over to toxicology. Yeah, maybe a blood virus. Sonny, tell me something. There may be a problem with serology. She's been in the water so long, if we find any semen, it's going to be degraded. You didn't leave anything. What? At my place, you didn't leave anything. Why would I leave anything? To let me know you were coming back. That should tell you something. Is that where you called? Yeah. I want your input on this heroin thing. Ooh. Sounds like an excuse for dinner. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Dominic's digging around in back cases. You know what that's all about? God knows. What are my files? Did the files come back? Uh... Jim has them. Excuse me? Jim has them? Um, he's actually in there with someone. Tomorrow night. And this time I'll leave something. Um, toxicology has the works on the Colville infant. Now, the key, um, what do I do? Do I go in through the window like the booster that got my stereo or what? I'm sorry about that. I'm having copies made. Well, there's a problem, you know. I can just borrow Jimmy's. Jimmy, can I borrow your key, if I... Yeah, he says, yeah. You'll get yours. Got mine. No, I just wanted to look through some of the old cases that you supervised uh, a while back, but I see that before I had a chance, Helen brought these files into your office. You know, actually, yeah, hey, Helen, are you that busy that you could just take a small suggestion? Okay, this is how it works. See, this is Flynn's office, and that one way across the hall... That's my office. Now, files I request, put them in my office. Not in Flynn's office. I asked to bring them to me. Oh, right. Okay, so sorry. And? Why are you pulling these? Because I think that there's certain elements here that we potentially overlook that link some of these cases together, okay? Drug and alcohol overdoses among prostitutes in our neck of the woods? Not exactly rare. You know, you're making my point for me. It's way too common. We can't afford to go digging up old cases. Oh, so this is a budgetary concern. This is not you being a little upset that I'm sticking my nose into rulings you made a long time ago. No, I don't like being second-guessed on old cases. Nobody does. These people, they're dead and buried. Their families have greed. They're trying to move on. What if there is a killer out there? What if he's operating right under our noses? You're speculating. You don't know that. And you're speculating with public money and professional reputations. And people's lives. Let's not forget about those. But I know the junkies and the hookers and that don't pay a lot of taxes, so... Don't insult me with this, Dominic. I don't deserve it. You're right, you don't. Okay. So, look. I'll tell you. Chief, you tell me to stop. You just tell me, drop this, I'll drop it. I swear to God, right now. must be important to get you all the way down here to the basement. It is. I represent the Colville family. Mm -hmm. They're wondering why you won't release the infant for burial. You know, I'm wanting to talk to Mr. Colville or Mrs. Colville or the nanny. But no one gets back to me and I leave messages. Why won't you release the body? Why won't they talk to me? They're distraught. They want the body released. What can I tell them? Okay. You can tell them the official cause of death is heroin overdose. You must be joking. Almost laughed till I cried when I first heard it. And I want an explanation as to how heroin gets in a baby's system. Have you talked to the nanny? Why? Is she a user? I don't know. I'm stunned. But it might explain her disappearance. Okay, look. You know, you can bring your client down to talk to me. He can come by himself if he wants to. I don't really care. Either way is... Colville good. is a highly respected criminal lawyer. He's yeah. personal friends with the attorney general. You know, I don't give a damn if he sits at God's right hand during dinner. A nine-month-old baby does not ingest heroin of his own free will, does he? Of course not. Then there's got to be an explanation, and let's hear all about it. Fine. Jim called, says he'll be late. He's having lunch with the AG. 
Okay, fine. Hi. Where are we at? We got toxicology back on Roxanne. Great. These numbers are going to knock you out of your chair. She had a blood alcohol reading of 0 0.9. What? What is the minimum lethal level? Oh, hey, you'll know this. It was just two weeks ago you were doing the breathalyzer Roblox. <laughs> just two weeks ago and you failed one, right? <laughs> oh, that's good. You laugh at his jokes, I'll find a new pathologist to work with. The minimum lethal level for alcohol poisoning is 0 0.35. You know, Our Roxanne had uh, three times that. Did she drown? I don't think so. There was no seawater in her stomach, but there was so much unmetabolized alcohol that her last meal was undigested. You know, a maintenance level for a lot of these people would kill any of us. Okay, but she'd have to eat and then immediately chug a lug 40 ounces of straight overproof to retain that level of alcohol. Okay. Well, here are the, uh, the cases that match Roxanne's profile. These are the Skid Row residents and part-time prostitutes who who died by what was thought to be, at the time, alcohol overdose cases. We got 20 over five years. Not bad. What have you got for me? Uh, homicide investigated seven of those as possible intentionals before they were declared uh, accidental or misadventure. Really? Six of the seven were found on the beach or in the water. An assault truck, right? Eh? Yeah. Okay, what we do is we concentrate on these seven. You'll start by interviewing the original detectives on the original cases, okay? Oh, that's gonna make me a lot of new friends. Don't love that. Can you guys do without me? I've got two autopsies clear before the afternoon. Sure, sure, sure. What do I say I'm looking for? Excuse me? If I'm gonna dig up these cases, my fellow detectives aren't gonna appreciate it, you know? We don't have a hard angle. You know, if you're worried about making new enemies up there, Mick, they don't like you anyway. <laughs> Thanks for the candor. Excuse me. How was lunch? The attorney general still thinks heroin is a law and order issue. Well, maybe he ought to get his hands dirty and roll a few ODs himself, then he get the picture. Is he at least going to commission a full report or what? He's going to take a look at your numbers and make a decision. I just saw Colville's lawyer outside. She's requesting an independent autopsy on the infant. Why? She believes our toxicology results have to be wrong. Mixed up, contaminated. Typical. Blame the lab. What was the father's explanation for the heroin? Uh, he refused to talk to me. He referred me to his lawyer. What about this nanny? She's got the same lawyer. Just a second. I was just talking with her. She just told me the nanny disappeared. She didn't mention she was representing her. Maybe the nanny disappeared on her advice. Well, it's a heroin OD now. It's my case. I'll put the screws to her. Um, anything turn up in those old cases? Yeah, we're, we're working through them. It's looking pretty good. Nothing yet. Keep me apprised. Yes, sir. Why do I get this sneaky suspicion making friends with you is a very mixed proposition. Detective Leary, Homicide Squad. I was told you might be of some help with an investigation. Well, I can try. You happen to know this woman? I think so. She's dead? Yeah. Oh. You know her name? Roseanne. Roxanne, that's right. Poor thing. What happened? Well, that's exactly what we're trying to find out. How well did you know her? Well, I, I don't know if I'm letting the cat out of the bag here, but... She was a working girl. They drop in from time to time. Get warm, grab a cup of coffee. Some of them use my address for mail. Do you have any Roxanne's mail? No. You know any friends or family? Sorry, no. When was the last time you saw her? Three, four weeks. She was a nice kid. <laughs> Funny. Liked to laugh a lot. 
So she didn't seem depressed? Only when she had to go to work on the street. Yeah, right. She into booze or drugs at all? I think she drank a little. Yeah. Well, listen, if uh, any of the other girls happen to come in and know anything, maybe you could have them give me a call. Or call me yourself. Yeah, I'd be happy to. All right, thanks a lot. Aboriginal female. There appear to be extensive needle punctures on the arms and thighs. It's sunny. Mr. Winston. Down the hall, almost to the end. Okay. Thanks. Cooking wines, breakfast of champions down here. It doesn't look like they're doing much cooking. There's a pretty deep gash in the back of the head. What do you think? It's a lot of blood, but it doesn't look like a fatal blow. I need an autopsy before I place a wager. Hey, Richie. Oh, you got a bone to pick with you. Good morning, Leo. What the hell do you mean by reopening my old cases? You think I don't have enough work to do? Or maybe my reputation needs a little dirt kicked up. Maybe it's both. I'm just trying to figure out what we have here. A hooker got slammed around, that's what. Brought her up here for a quick bang. She got feisty and they went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Now, what here would indicate that particular scenario to you, Leo? Oh, I talked to the desk clerk on the way up. Mick, will you go get the clerk? Want to bring the desk clerk up here a minute? Now, I'm asking you again, why are you digging into my old cases? I think they might fit a pattern like this one. Spiders on acid make patterns. Besides, this doesn't fit. All the others were found in the water or on the beach. Isn't that right? We're two blocks from the ocean right here. He was trying to get out the window. The window's nailed shut. So now he doesn't want to draw attention to himself by breaking the window, so he decides he has to leave her. He leaves her. In a joint like this, he could drag her down the hall with a brass marching band and nobody would notice. Could he? Anyway, I don't know what the hell makes you think he had any further plans at all. He banged her. That's what he wanted. They fought, more than likely, about who got the last sip of this fine wine in there, and he hit her. Maybe she fell over by herself, hit her head. Hell, the guy probably doesn't even know she's dead. All he knows is he got the last sip, and that's what counts. I got the desk clerk for him. Henry! Will you come in here and tell my friends from the coroner's service what a fine young lady like that was doing in a discreet little rendezvous like the one that you run so well? I didn't hear any disturbance last night. Do you recall seeing this young lady and her companion, or companions, what they were doing up here? Well, I wasn't paying much attention, but I think she went into the room with two guys. Two guys? Two guys? That sound like a pattern or a party? Two guys, he thinks. Maybe one. That was cooking wine they were drinking in there. That stuff will kill you, man. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks. I've, I've, had, I've had the blackouts. Like entire nights have vanished by me into the ether. And then these memories, well, I don't really know if you can like call them memories. So these images then, yeah, just jump into my brain and uh, I panic. So, yeah, okay. It's it's like it's like you dream. You know, like when you're dreaming and you're in a vivid dream, and now you're starting to. Uh, well, you swear you're going to remember it because it's so lucid. 
but as you wake up, you, you can't hold on, you know? And then you, then you know, you, you don't even know if like, you were even dreaming at all in the first place. You have no clue. I don't. Very good. I think you're really developing. Thanks. Yeah. Now, how did you get to these? Did you uh, copy from one of the anatomy books? Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, what, right. What? No, no, Dad. That's that's a real model, live. What? Yeah, like in person. He asked for my phone number too. And, and what did you say? The phone. No. Did you hear this? They have live nude models. I can look see. At, look at this. Big Latch is only drawing him. Oh, I, uh, I got your house key copy. Oh, thank you. That's good. I was also wondering if I could get some copies of some of your autopsy tapes. Which one? Like, you're busy. I'll just go and grab them myself. Are they still in the study? Yet? I would like to know which ones first. Well, Patty, it's all the alcohol overdose cases we're working on. It's going back to December 91. I mean, I, I made a list. You want to see the list? Yeah. Yeah, I do. You do? Uh -huh. No. What do you mean, no? Do, do, you, do you realize that technically these are property of the coroner's service? I can just have these subpoenaed. You want me to do that? I know what you're doing, and I don't appreciate it. Well, what am I doing exactly you don't appreciate? My job? This is not about your job. This is about you being angry and trying to find some way to attack Jim and me. <laughs> and here it was me thinking it was about a half a dozen women who may have been murdered. And, and it was just a coincidence that Jim was the coroner and I was the pathologist no, on most I never of said that. That was no coincidence. Jimmy went out of his way to request you as pathologist. I would say your relationship grew at faster than familiarity on the job. You still refuse to admit that it was just as much your fault as it was That's mine. That's not what I said. So you're, you're going back over old issues. I'm not going and back. And you are picking at scabs. You're just trying to find some way Whoa. to make me into the wrong one. And, and first you attacked me personally, and now okay. you're attacking me professionally. No, no. It's like our whole marriage is going to bloody inquest. Okay, fine. Okay. I did not come over here, Patricia, to pick a fight with you. I think we should talk about this tomorrow. You're very upset. Hey, Gabriella, I, I gotta go, sweetheart. Any, uh, any chance I could um, take one of your masterpieces here with me? Yeah, take any one you want, Daddy. Really? Okay. okay, I'm going for this one. The face is good. You think it's good? I think it's great. I'm gonna have this right in my office. And I'm gonna study it, because if I ever see this guy in the street, <laughs> I'm gonna have him arrested. <laughs> Don't laugh. I will spare you getting the subpoena, I would appreciate getting them back as I'm using some of the notes for my book. Great. Your key. Okay. Take a round over that young lady, Henry. Tell her that from me. Sit down, this could take a while. Sharky. I'll take another one of the same, please. Yeah. Hey. Do you have a thing for colored girls? <laughs> Boys, girls. As long as they're colored, yeah. Hey, come on, you're kidding some, aren't you? Well, tell me, I'd tell you. Mm. There's a picture I don't need in my head. Your shot, Leary. Saved by the balls. You better watch her. She moves them around, you know? Yeah, she does that. Scotch on the rocks. Hey, Leo. Hey, what happened? I, I thought that you were a friend of Bill's. Actually, make that a double. Hey, if this is going to be your first, let me give you a hand. No, off no, no, no. I, I can't do that. It's like a rule. No, I insist. It would be an honor, really. Okay. You put that on my tab. All right. Hey, listen. Uh, I got to subpoena some records. This doctor has hit me. Could you call an inquest and seize the files for me? Do the legwork. 
I'll be paying for this one. Come on, do me a favor. Excuse me, I got some friends over here. Hey, that's where you're wrong. You don't got any friends. All you got is employees. Your own goddamn little army of serfs. Okay. So you want to be here? No place I'd rather be. All right, I got the way. Hey, I want to make a toast. Shannon, you're pissed. Hey, shut up in the back. Come on, everybody, uh, raise your glass to a man among men. Our uh, moral leader, our compass in times of trouble, he has cast off the chains and shackles of sobriety and returned to the fellowship of the great. <laughs> to Da Vinci! Hey, 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 hey. Last call! Last call! Where's your room? Whoa, wait a second, we need something to drink. I got fucked. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on one second. Show me the money. Well, upstairs. <laughs> I, I, I am very happy to be back. It, it's, it's great to be back with my pals, my buddies. It really is. And in honor of the occasion, I'm going to sing. Where are you going? I'm going to sing. Why not? All right? It's a very nice song, very sad song. Pugliacci, Vesti la Juba. All right, here's the story. It's about a clown. Now, this clown, he's crying on the inside. Why is he crying on the inside? Because his wife, his wife is fooling around on him. And he's jealous. He's jealous. And he wants to kill somebody. So what does he do? He sings. Softly. Pretty Pugliaccio. I suggest to you that you lock this door, because if Leo Shannon should come out that door, I may have to knock him right into traffic. Well, you know, that's fine, because Patricia's on call tonight. Oh, I love this place. Listen, stop. Yeah? God bless chaos. No! <coughs> okay. Don't be long. Shannon is always good for a quote or two. I bet. The trouble is, you can never print anything he says. Well, at least not in a family paper. Well, I really owe you for this one, thanks. And Uncle Ed. Yeah? 
You look pleased with yourself. Well, anything on the Colville case? Yeah, I spoke to the lawyer. I told her I've been in touch with Immigration Canada. It turns out that the nanny's legal. She has a working visa. So um, Larry's got contact through some of her friends, and I'm expecting some information this afternoon. Sounds like the lawyer's running interference for him. This is, this is worth reading. This is a backstory on uh, Shannon, some alcohol overdose case. Read it. It's good. This better be worth all the time. Excuse me, Jim. That's the attorney general on the phone. Right, I'll take you to my... Great. Hey, ask him if he's read my report, and if he hasn't, why not? So what happened last before you put the baby in the crib? What were you doing? I was changing the baby. I had fed him. Then I put him to bed. I came back an hour later, and he was not already breathing. Mr. Colville's lawyer tell you how the baby died? Died of a heroin overdose. Heroin, you know what that is? Homicide squad. We have a warrant here to search a residence. You're welcome to either stay or leave during the execution of this warrant. tragedy. Hmm? Beautiful little boy. You want to tell me what you think happened, Mr. Colville? Not without my lawyer present. See, now that's a good idea. Is your wife around? I'd like to ask her a couple of questions. She's recovering in hospital. Is that right? Yes. Mr. Colville, I don't want to advise you what to do here, all right? But your use of heroin is going to come up at either an inquest or a trial. It's just going to prolong the grieving and healing process, isn't it? Now, you've already lost your son. You may lose your wife. You're going to turn around and realize one day the only thing you've got left to count on is the dope. Your wife and your son deserve more than that. Nanny was changing his diaper, and she was out of talcum powder. And she went into our bathroom, and she got the container that she'd seen under the sink. Take a minute if you want. I kept my stash in there. So if she shook the container hard enough, thinking it was just talcum powder, she may have loosened the flat, might have shaken the hell loose. I don't know. I, I found the container later in the nursery, and I don't know. The cap was always loose. So the nanny's changing the baby, telephone rings, she gets up, leaves the room. 
leaves the baby by himself, picks up the container, starts to play with it a little bit, maybe puts it in his mouth. <laughs> he was just... <sighs> everything in his mouth. Just... A baby, I... Dad? You buy it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll buy it. Okay. I've got to uh, get his baby ready for release. His uh, wife is coming in. that case. I can't say I particularly remember the interview, though. Sonia is one of the regular crime reporters. She calls me all the time. Thinks she likes me. Yeah, she says you're a good quote. Oh, funny. Yeah, that one, uh... We found her under the bed. There was a lot of blood. We figured she'd been raped and then hit over the head with a hatchet or something, so we were out looking for the suspect. It says here in the autopsy report that your ex didn't think that was the case. They found lethal levels of alcohol with toxicology. Lethal levels. So now you guys went back and you re-examined that crime scene, didn't you? Yeah, we found the bed had one of those uh, sharp slots you can put a headboard in. We figured that's what she hit her head on, being as drunk as she was. Yeah, but there's like there's two weeks now in between the time this toxicology report showed up and the time you did the reconstruction. And that's the time that you decided you'd give an interview? That sounds right, yeah. And then you tell the reporter that you found some forensic evidence that you think might lead to a suspect. Yeah. What, what did you find, Leo? Well, nothing. That was to flush out anybody trying to make a break. It was bullshit. And the point is... Look, what's the problem? What's my problem? Your ex agreed with Flynn that it was more than likely an accident, so we terminated the investigation. It fits the pattern. Oh, the it fits... No, there's a pattern. pattern. She's reported seeing the company of a man, right? Who go in, they go into a room, and then she's found with excessive levels of alcohol. She's loaded to the gills. That's a pattern. Except she wasn't dumped in the water or washed up after death. Right, she wasn't dumped in the water. Why wasn't she dumped in the water? This question's for you, Leo. Why wasn't she dumped in the water? How the hell should I know? Because he read the paper and he saw that you guys have found forensic evidence and now he takes the time to clean the body, to wash the body, to dump the body in the water, maybe. So you know where that leaves us? Mile zero. Are you gonna lay that off on me? That's what he's worried about. You are a dark prince. <laughs>